मैनेजमेंट
Nitric oxide is basically smooth muscle relaxant. It uh, basically relaxes the smooth muscle, so it decreases the uterine contraction. There are multiple patches available of nitric oxide, like 50 mg nitric oxide uh, patch for 48 hours. And the other drug is <clears throat> beta agonist. Beta agonist uh, terbutaline and ritorbine. These drugs can be used. Terbutaline dose is 0.2 mg, subcutaneous for. Um, <laughs> Basically, the beta agonists, what they do, they also increase, the, uh, they also decrease the intracellular calcium level, so they decrease the uterine contraction. The issue with this drug is it has multiple adverse effects. It leads to tremor, palpitation, hypokalemia, cardiac arrest, and it leads to hyperglycemia, and also leads to the pulmonary edema, which is, uh, that's why these drugs are not used now. And uh, all these after endomethacin are the most important thing that you mentioned in endomethacin. We are going to do your entire presentation again. Yes, sir. Yeah. This, this supplementation. This supplementation. Okay. 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 Uh, well done. Excellent. When you give endomethacin, the only problem with endomethacin is that we It's supposed to be given. Be, uh, it's for 30, 22 uh, to 32 weeks. It uh, cannot be given after uh, 32 weeks. Uh, and there is another most important drug, a drug called magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate can also be used in fetal labor and the loading dose is 4 to 6 grams uh, uh, four to six grams over 15 minutes, then the maintenance dose is 1 to 2 grams per hour. The issue with this drug is it, this drug can lead to the thinning of fetal uh, bones. So uh, this drug uh, also, uh, so this uh, drug can also be used as precaution. Now, sir, I'm a presentation. Well done. So carry on. Now, you guys, well done. Excellent. Carry on, Daniel. Thank you. Honestly, I'm very, yeah. very impressed. Mashallah. We have a teacher of mine, sir. Mm -hmm. ah. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Achha, this moment, please. Uh, uh, what's the goal of it? Pregnancy, are they first places on a chill viability? Chill viability is achieved. Viability achieved is not accurate. No, um, in a utopian world, yeah, a perfect world, that would be possible. Like it, it's not. Basically, what you're trying to do is the goal of the column is to continue the pregnancy for a further 48 hours. For dex are covered. Number two, for what is called in utero transfer. So if a girl is supposed stuck in Mia Valley and the, the neonatal facility isn't good and she is 32 weeks or 31 weeks or whatever, so what you'll do is you'll give her endomethacin. Endomethacin is 50 to 100 milligrams of the colicula. She's less than 32 weeks. Take it. Or so it's a maintenance so 25 milligrams ki every four hours ke ye goli khati rahe. Or us gadi pe bitha or send her to Lahore. Yeah. Okay. So you, what you're trying to do is uh -huh. gain time so that your DEXA can work and gain time so that you can in utero transfer. You transfer the baby inside the uterus to a better facility where if she delivers, then she'll be all right. Okay. So that's the basic goal of the policy. Other than that, if you want to take the pregnancy to viability, that's a definite no-no, because that does not happen if she is actually in preterm labor. And remember that if you should say that I didn't want to stop her like this, because it's about it. Uh, the thing is that preterm labor, obviously, signs and symptoms are there. If you go just by contraction, and uh, you don't look at the cervix or the cervix doesn't change, only 13% of the people will actually deliver within the next seven days if, if you're talking just about contraction. Okay. The other factors, now she'll, she'll tell us more, uh, the four factors which can cause preterm labor. Kya kya se? Infection. 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 Yeah. Pyelonephritis. All this nonsense. Even bacterial vaginosis can cause it. So always be careful. So that's why you treat these infections aggressively. 
at the same time remember that 80 plus percent of the women during pregnancy will pick up some sort of an infection. Why? It's an immunocompromised stage. So if she develops a, a sort of an infection, yeah, if it's a patient, you're seeing a patient in, uh, uh, you know, in your clinic, temperature check, asking her how her general health is, getting a urine done, always important. Because she can develop all this problems. Other causes, solo infection, okay, well done. Next. Michael is complicated. Okay. Is it fetal history? Is it fetal history? Or? You can have multiple injections in polyhydramnias. Polyhydramnias. What does polyhydramnias mean? Increase. How does it cause fetal history? It's a head put the pressure, uh, put the pressure on the abdomen that lead to the uh, shortening of cervical length. What is this called? Over distension of the uterus. Uh, over distension, over of, distension of the uterus can happen in multiple pregnancies. It can happen in a lot of other things. So all you say is you have pathology defined for me after the CDC. So you just choose your word carefully to you say over distension so that you don't have to remember standard the idea. And then last bit is an important bit is stress related condition. Conditions the fetal or maternal stress, both the Haan. both increase the risk a, of preterm. That is Ajkal Kid, that is uh, written as a map part of the device. So it was the number one cause. Take it. Any condition which can cause stress to the mother or the fetus can result in preterm labor. And and the fourth thing which everybody knows. We should know, we can see more commonly. Uh, Freedom rupture of membrane. Freedom rupture, double C. Mm -hmm. Okay, infection, you have to hemorrhage. Hemorrhage. Any sort of hemorrhage can lead to freedom membrane. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is the install of Shulkar. This one. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Dr. Khatiba, postgraduate resident in Kaini and Ops Department. Today, the topic of discussion is free term labor. Why this topic is so important? As uh, if there's an increased risk of preterm labor, there'll be more chance to deliver prematurely. And the fetal will develop more complications of prematurity <laughs> like RDS, interventricular hemorrhage, sepsis. The less the gestational age, the more neurosensory deficit. So to decrease the mortality, uh, to decrease the neonatal mortality and morbidity, it is so important to identify high risk patients and manage accordingly. What is the definition of preterm labor? <clears throat> preterm labor is defined as spontaneous occurrence of regular intermittent painful contractions producing cervical changes less than 37 weeks of gestation or more than 24 weeks of gestation. Uh, what is actual preterm labor? Actual uh, preterm labor includes the regular uterine contraction that increase in intensity and duration with uh, cervical changes like more than 50% effacement and more than 10 percent, uh, for more than 10 centimeter dilatation. The in one centimeter dilatation. <clears throat> The incidence of uh, preterm labor is 10%, in which the 6% is spontaneous, unexplained, and 3 to 4% is iatrogenic. The uh, previous history of preterm labor is also, also increased the incidence. If the patient present after first uh, after one preterm birth, the risk uh, of uh, incidence increase up to 20%, and if she present after second preterm birth, uh, the risk increase up to 40%. There is a term called threatened preterm labor. This term is defined as documented uterine contraction, but no cervical changes. <laughs> All right. Just going by the definition, we have said extreme preterm labor should be written in the next slide also, 24 weeks. Longer. Now, this is different for each country. As the, as the definition of a miscarriage is also different in each country. Okay? Miscarriage ka matlab, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, the trouble with miscarriage is that miscarriage means that you cannot save the baby, okay, just by general definition. So, in our country, can we save a 24 weeks? Of so, from a practical point of view, think it's absolutely right, practically from a, from a practical point of view, I think, uh, you should understand where you are 
ठीक है एंड यू शुड जज दिस अकॉर्डिंगली ट्वेंटी फोर वीक्स इज फाइन बाई डेफिनेशन बट I think in Pakistan, 28 weeks is uh, more accurate. Maybe we'll be able to say, it. and uh, plus the amount of money that these people spend on a 24 weeker when they try to save it, and the sort of things that can happen to that baby. Mm -hmm. It has happened in my family in America. A 25 weeker monochorionic uh, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Both boys, she lost one, mm -hmm. and the other one. Uh, they are, uh, you know, taking too much care of him. They, he had a problem with his eyes. Then he had to stay in the hospital for about three, four months after delivery. Uh, literally, the whole family had to relocate to another hospital. Mm -hmm. So it is the amount of money that is spent on that one baby will ruin ninety nine percent of our families living in Pakistan. That was the expense that was spent on that baby. So I think we should just be always careful for twenty eight weeks. I would never put up the better be, or I'll try to, but I won't to give them any false hope. And the other thing about endometriosis, which I just remembered, was that you're not supposed to use it more than forty eight hours. Okay, uh, this uh, endometriosis, endometriosis in particular. Okay. बर्थ <laughs> 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 Uh, and the second most important is preterm rupture of membrane. Then there, there is if there is a shortening of cervical length. The shortening of cervical length can be in case of any uterine anomaly uh, like bicuspid <coughs> uterus or septate uterus, in which there is a shorter room for baby to dwell. Or in case of any sort of cervical surgery like cervical cone biopsy or any sort of cervical pottery. Uh, and uh, the third most important factor is infection. The infection can leads to um, preterm labor uh, more than a uh, forty percent uh, than the normal one, and there are also some associated risk factor include the extreme of age. If there is a teenage pregnancy or elderly pregnancy, it can leads to preterm birth, uh, or if there is um, extreme of BMI. If the patient is underweight or obese, it can lead to the preterm labor. And any uh, low socioeconomic status, um, any stressful environment for fetal mother can lead to the preterm birth. And if you see in uh, the present pregnancy, if the patient conceived by assisted reproductive techniques and there are more than two embryos transferred, it can lead to the preterm uh, labor. Any sort of fetal disorder, uh, chromosomal anomaly, structural anomaly, growth restriction, or death can lead to the preterm labor. Or any sort of vaginal bleeding in first or second trimester, it can also increase the risk of preterm labor in the patient. and uh, as sir said uh, polyhydramnios it can lead to the over distension of uterus that can lead to the uh, shortening of cervical length and the other medical conditions in the female like hypertension diabetes thyroid disease and asthma that can lead to the preterm labor and other uh, psycho uh, psycho psychological issues includes it, uh, it uh, includes the depression or stress and if the patient is smoking um taking a uh, heavy alcohol uh, consumption that can lead to the preterm uh, labor then so one sec why did i say stress uh, i just remember sir so because then when you're not prepared now you remember think it is so when it's called stress stress in use what where does it damage the baby or the mother it can happen to any one of so it goes into the hypothalamic pituitary and adrenal axis wo jo teenon cheeze hoti hai na hypothalamic ka function pituitary ka function and the adrenal the adrenal se kya nikalta hai cortisol theek hai to wahan pe usko ye usi axis ko damage karke that is the reason why stress causes this stuff that is the latest hypothesis they have given as far as preterm labor is concerned ke do dimag ke aur ek mutwa Hypothalamic, pituitary, and adrenal axis point of care. Sir, 
stress causes some sort of problem which can either in mother or in the baby which can result in preterm labor. What are the predictors of preterm labor? They are clinical, biophysical, and biochemical predictors. Clinical predictor includes multiple pregnancy, previous history of preterm birth, presence of any genital tract infection, 60% uh, risk increase uh, of pre, uh, 60 risk of preterm labor increase if the patient is having genital tract infection or any symptom of preterm labor. What are the biophysical predictors? Unary, uh, uterine contractions, if the uh, bishop score is greater than four, and if the cervical length decreases. What are the biochemical predictors? The most important biochemical predictor is fetal, fetal fibronectin levels. The normal uh, fetal fibronectin in uh, cervical vaginal secretion between 24 to 32 weeks is less than 50 nanograms per ml. And if the patient is having positive uh, value of um, this fetal fibronectin, there is 40% chance that the patient will uh, go into the preterm labor in next seven days. And if the patient is having negative uh, value of this fetal fibronectin, there is a 99% chance that the patient will not develop preterm labor in next seven days. So this uh, is very important. Other factors include interleukin-6, uh, tissue necrotic factor, and they are under trial. What are the investigation we do? We do the um, uh, blood sampling for CBC and CRP to rule out any sort of infection, then urine for routine analysis and culture and sensitivity to rule out any urinary tract uh, urinary tract infection or cervical vaginal swab for culture and fetal fibronectin levels. There is an important role of scan for fetal well-being, the cervical length, and localization of placenta. Well, yeah, vaginal I, examination, yeah. as, as I already told, is not recommended. One thing, sir. Yes. There's another investigation which you guys should know about. Anybody who's going to go for the exam, okay? It's called the GPS swab. Mm -hmm. Anybody heard of this? Yes. Group P strep swab. Mm -hmm. okay. You always do that between, mm -hmm. usually they do it between 36 and 37 weeks. Mm -hmm. Once at least. But uh, in preterm labor, when you're taking swabs, you should always take GBS swap. What is GBS? Group B structure. It can lead to the sepsis in very It is basically the general colonization of the group B strep. Mm -hmm. So when the baby is passing through the canal, it can actually pick up a very decent of infection, which can lead to a lot of problems with the baby. It's not very common, therefore we don't do it in Pakistan. Uh, many, I don't know how many standards that are but it's a routine screening. Whenever you are discussing any sort of pregnant condition where uh, it, she might deliver or something, even if it's preterm or something, think about the GBS swap. They would want you to say uh, group B strep the swap. How we can prevent uh, freedom? We can pre uh, prevent it at primary, secondary, and tertiary level. At primary level, reduce the risk factor. If the patient is having infection, deal with it. This, at the secondary level, uh, do early screening for early detection and prophylactic treatment. That is due to colicis if patient uh, present less than 34 weeks of uh, uh, gestation. Uh, uh, patient uh, present at 14 to 16 uh, with, with uh, the shortening uh, of cervical length or cervical incompetence uh, to elective circulage. Uh, and uh, at the tertiary level, reduce the perinatal morbidity and mortality uh, after uh, diagnosis. That is the use of steroid to dexacover. Uh, and there is an uh, important role, role of progesterone. Progesterone can be um, can be given between 16 to 24 weeks up to 36 weeks to the, uh, to the mother to reduce the risk of preterm if the patient is having prior history of preterm labor. Uh, the progesterone can be given in the form of intramuscular injection, oral, and it can also be used vaginally. There is a lot of debate about progesterone. Mm -hmm. They're not sure about it, but it's okay. All right, give it to the market. Mm -hmm. The other thing, uh, have we reached the diagnosis yet? Yeah, we will go much to carry on. What are the tocolytic agents that we use? Okay. The agents can be used if the patient presents with a uh, gestational age less than 34 weeks. The most important tocolytic agent is calcium channel blocker, that is NPDP. This drug is a drug of choice uh, between 32 to 34 weeks because it is easily available, it is cost effective, can be given orally, and it has less side effects. 
So, uh, so this drug is um, most commonly used. It block, blocks the entry of calcium inside the cell and the recommended dose of tablet nifedipine is 20 mg stat, then one, uh, one hourly, uh, then half hourly 10 mg up to 60 mg with BP and pulse every 15 minutes. Once the contraction ceases, uh, then start 10 mg BD for 24 hours till, uh, till the completion of steroid prophylaxis. And the important side effect of this drug is hypotension and tachycardia. The other side effect includes headache, fetal edema, flushing. And the second agent is prostaglandin synthetase inhibitor, that is endomethacin. And the, uh, endomethacin is COX inhibitor drug. The recommended dose of this drug is 50 mg per rectally or 50 to 100 mg orally loading dose, followed by the uh, 25 to 50 mg orally every four to six hours for 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And the side effect of this drug is oligohydramnios and constriction of ductus arteriosus. That's why this drug cannot be used after th uh, 32 weeks of gestation. The other side effects include gastritis and a bleeding. One second. All right, Cox inhibitor. What is Cyclooxygenase uh, enzyme. Cyclo enzyme, which is used when the arachidonic acid that is converted to prostaglandin. So, this enzyme is used there when uh, arachidonic acid or arachidonic acid or whatever it's called it, it's converted to prostaglandin. So, it's the COX2 inhibitor. So, it inhibits that enzyme. Therefore, inhib inhibiting the production of prostaglandin, which therefore inhibits or that the plant to inhibit labor. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, for our first class with that, the other thing I would always say, trying to stop labor before 32 weeks, mm -hmm. then trying to stop labor between 32 and 34 weeks. Mm -hmm. okay. Trying to stop labor before 32 weeks, I would once you're sure of it, which I think both of us have missed, mm -hmm. because make sure that you have the dates correct yes. before we start off the whole start our agenda about uh, free term level. So, less than 32 weeks, I would say the first choice which you've written yourself is in the mm -hmm. Less than 32 weeks, not nephedism. Yes. And the uh, then 32 to 34 weeks, the first choice could be this, this thing. Obviously, if there are any contraindications to it, not so. Mm -hmm. But uh, and the other thing is, how long should we continue to call this for? The best way to remember that is you can just make a the marker but how long? The time of the first dose of steroid. Okay, and it's 48 hours. That's it. Usse zada apne Given the first dose of steroid, उसके 48 आवर्स का आपने डिपॉजिट करना है मैक्स उससे ज्यादा आपने नहीं करना बोथ दीस देन इट बिकम्स वेरी सिंपल ना रादर देन कि इसको याद करो उसको याद करो फर्स्ट डोज ऑफ द स्टीरॉइड के लिए 48 आवर्स तक दैट्स दैट्स योर लिमिट फॉर द फॉलो दैट ऑसिड मैन डोंट डिस्कस इट नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड डोंट डिस्कस इट द ओनली थिंग करंटली द फर्स्ट चॉइस इज दिस चैप एंडोमेथसिन बिफोर 32 वीक्स द सेकंड वन इज नेफेडिपिन 32 to 34 weeks, the first choice is nepedipine. Second choice is uh, tributylene, Tribute. which you said. Yes. These, of uh, atosiban, I've used atosiban. You've used? Uh, but it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, nitric oxide and all this, 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 these are now categorized as less effective and not given. Mm -hmm. See? So don't worry about them. Don't remember them. Just know what they are. And uh, that's a little bit about them is more than enough. So, carry on. <laughs> 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 <
कंफ्यूजन ये होता है कि आप लोडिंग डोज देते हैं उसकी पता नहीं कितने मिलियन थी या क्या था वो देखे uh, उसके बाद एवरी फोर आवर्स टिल द टाइम द बेबी इज डिलीवर्ड अगर कोई लड़की दूसरी स्टेप पॉजिटिव आ गई उसका इस तरह से लोडिंग डोज एवरी फोर आवर्स टिल डिलीवरी और अगर आपने अगर आपको शक है कि शी इज इन लेबर यू नीड टू गिव इट बट इफ शी वांट्स यू वांट्स टू कॉल इट दिस जस्ट कंटिन्यू एंड यू सी दैट शी इज नॉट इन रिटर्न लेबर एंड स्टॉप द एंटीबायोटिक फॉर दैट तो चार चीजें क्या क्या है बोलो कॉलेजेस कॉलेजेस के लिए चलो ये कर दिया और एंड हां एंड नहीं दूसरा Preeclampsia, eclampsia. Its cervical dilatation is more than a four centimeter. Uh, then do not do, uh, use to colitic therapy. And the fetal contraindication includes fetal distress, fetal death, any congenital malformation in fetus, and pregnancy beyond thirty four weeks. And there are obstetric contraindication includes rupture of membrane, chorea amniotis. Excuse me, sir. so if you are going to do a c section and the route of delivery and the delivery has already been decided so for 4 hours what are we trying to gain mai ye soch raha tha would it even have that big an effect so it can bring down the blood pressure it can also you prevent so we have other, uh, so what what do you actually want to use for the blood uh, that other thing or the contractions come karne ke liye अगर हम वो यूज करते हैं टाइम टू आस्क कि इसको यूज करने की कॉन्ट्रेडिकेशन सर यही है कि सेक्शन कर रहे हैं या कुछ और भी है
कौन सी वाली कमी तो वैसे ही हम दे देते हैं ब्लड प्रेशर के लिए अगर उसे है तो All the rest are obstetrical emergencies. So in emergencies, you're not supposed to dilly dally. If other, if you have a a a, a previa which is like twenty uh, eight weeks, twenty six weeks, okay. And if delivery is not imminent, so after that you must see what they do. If delivery is not imminent, she starts bleeding. Everything is done. The you know the things are completely. This is what she's done. Uh, fetal distress is another emergency. Fetal death is a completely different scenario. The natural malformation, what are you trying to achieve? Uh, baby is gone anyway. Pregnancy beyond 34 weeks, there's no point doing it. Obstetric structure of membrane is over there. What do you do? It's gone. Corium nitis, another emergency. Or treat it as an emergency because they, because they sue you. So all these are basically अपना खाका बताना बाकी तुम जैसे ठीक तू नंबर से बेहतरी पड़ा हो एक तो टॉकिंग अबाउट प्री टर्म लेबर प्री टर्म लेबर प्री टर्म लेबर What are the uh, she comes and she says मुझे दर्दें आ रही हैं ये आएगी ना ठीक है मैं भी इसमें ही था ठीक है वो दर्दें आ रही हैं so दर्दें आ रही हैं तो क्या कहें कितनी दर्दें आ रही हैं yes what do you mean by दर्दें ठीक है tell me for regular contraction within twenty minutes the recommendation is there sure but you which we examine the patient basically for palpable contraction for ten minutes and we'll check if they are regular And the intensity and duration. What is recommended in the cow which I read was six or more palpable contractions. No more than twenty seconds, fifteen seconds, twenty seconds, or in sixty minutes. Okay. So don't dismiss preterm labor. You may not have heard. Okay. Six or more in sixty minutes. Thank you. If we are having one per table, 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 नहीं बेटा मैं हाँ तो मैं आ रहा हूँ क्योंकि मैंने शुरू में कहा था कि अगर एक लड़की आती है तो सिक्स और मोर कंट्रैक्शन आते हैं सिक्सटी मिनट्स में ओनली थर्टीन परसेंट ऑफ दैम डिलीवर विद इन द नेक्स्ट सेवेन डेज नंबर तो डोंट जस्ट गो बाय द कंट्रैक्शन और 
So that is a diagnosis, not a definition. More than more. If it's four centimeters and it's smaller in the between. Huh? Uh, the patient is in advanced level. Three centimeters or more than three centimeters. Contraindication to my screen is our that's dodgy. I can argue with it because it's a three centimeters in itself is a hard one to keep pelvic findings for a person. Two to three, two centimeters there, and that's the other one. Four centimeters, that's the other one. Four centimeters, three like that. So three centimeters more than or equal to three centimeters plus contractions. That's one. Number two is contraction plus you do a TBS. Then the cervical length is less than two centimeters. That's another one on the greater length. Mm -hmm. That's a second definite uh, diagnosis. And the third diagnosis is the higher contractions plus cervical length of two, which is between two to three centimeters length. length. And a positive fetal fiber neck in them. That is the third. Here has to be. Then I take it up to it. I'm sorry, take it again. Like in this, the hotel, yeah, get TBS, but about cervical length, that's the answer. You need to be Joe Hamnera, however, cervical length, it should be more than 2.5 centimeters. When you when I don't know whether you guys are doing it or not, but when somebody asks you a test uh, to check the length of the cervix for a previous. Uh, distributor of labor over you, you do basically doing a cervical check at around about, I think, 14 weeks, 12 weeks, so that they can apply the, the stitch. So I always used to go, okay, 2.5 is other, so we're all right. So 2.5 isn't that bad at all. So this is new, what I was reading when we came in, so it's slightly strange, they can give a definition. Yeah, carry on, so not here. So, what is the management? Change. If a patient comes to you with pre-term labor, uh, first take the history, proper LMP, uh, uh, find out the gestational age by scan, early scan or LMP. Then find out any previous history of pre-term labor, any previous history of surgery, any previous any history of congenital anomaly in fetus, any history of uh, uterine anomaly. Make sure the maternal and fetal well-being. We can check the fetal well-being by um, CTG or FKCC, and we can check the maternal well-being by a white, uh, checking the vitals. And to rule out the placenta previa and abruption, then um, check for the gestational age. If the gestational age is uh, greater than 34 weeks of gestation, there is no need of tricholysis. Um, uh, give the steroid covers and keep under observation. If the contraction ceases, the patient can go home. And if not, um, and if the patient can go, uh, if the patient is going into the spontaneous labor, she can be admitted. <clears throat> then if the patient is less than 34 weeks of gestation, check for the cervical dilatation. You can check the cervical dilatation by, by, uh, by performing the t um, uh, first speculum examination. If the cervical dilatation is less than three centimeters, obtain the secretion for fetal fibronectin level and do um, transvaginal scan. And if on the scan, the cervical length is greater than uh, 30 cent uh, three centimeter and if the fibronectin test is positive, you can admit the patient, do a tocolysis, give a neuroprotection cover and um, also um, keep under observation. And if the fetal fibronectin level is negative and the cervical length is greater than three centimeter, Keep the patient under observation, and if labor is not, um, and uh, if the there is no uh, dilatation and abasement, uh, there is no progressive cervical dilatation and abasement, she can discharge. And if the cervical length is less than two centimeter and there is fe uh, fetal fibronectin level positive, and if um, then admit the patient, do the colysis, uh, give antibiotic cover for GBS pro uh, prophylaxis, give magnesium sulfate for a neuroprotection if the patient is between 24 to 32 weeks and give steroid cover if the patient is between um, 20, um, 23 to 34 weeks. Covered. This is covered. Okay. Almost time is up. Well done. Excellent presentation. Well done. And what I want you to do now is the hardest part. Okay. And I expect to see the results.
hardest part of questions. questions. No, 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 not the questions. Nothing but nothing like that. What you're going to do is we've all talked a lot of nonsense about things which we don't have yet, which makes me uncomfortable. So what I want you to do is consult people on this and you can discuss it whenever you want to. You know, okay. I want you to make a simple formula. Okay, sir. Uh, what you will do with a preterm label or a possible query preterm label patient here. Okay, sir. Or a chota sa chart. Okay. So that we have our own protocol. With the things that are available over here. We can't have fibronectin here. Yes, sir. Sir. Okay. Now, what do you think? We do ex first of all history. Yeah, we'll talk about history. Examine 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 history. Rough में पिशक दिखाओ बाद में उसको ठीक है well done शाबाश और चार के बहुत patient आते हैं लेकिन लेकिन इतना भी नहीं ये क्या है तेरे खाली तेरे पैसे वापस मांगेगी